Welcome to Learning with Lee, where we discuss nature and wildlife in Kiowa Island. I'm your host, Lee Bundrick, Land Preservation Coordinator for the Kiowa Conservancy. Today we'll be learning about Kiowa shorebirds and what all of us can do to help protect them. My guest for today's discussion is Betty Papillo, Kiowa Island Shorebird Stewardship Program Coordinator. Welcome, Betty. Hi, Lee. I'm excited to be here. It's nice to be able to talk about the Kiowa shorebirds and the Shorebird Stewardship Program, so I'm real happy that you asked me to do that. We're glad to have you. Betty, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? My husband and I retired to Kiowa uh, full-time about a year and a half ago, and um, we're just enjoying our time down there, getting involved with various things. Grandma to six beautiful grandkids, and I'm a nature lover, and I guess that's kind of about it. I wanted to talk a little bit about the Kiowa Island Shorebird uh, Stewardship Program. Could you tell us what it is? Yeah, it's a fairly new program. Um, this is only its third season. What it is is a, a bunch of volunteers who love and care about shorebirds who go out on the beaches and act as ambassadors or advocates for our shorebirds. We're not like law enforcers. It's all done in a very positive way. And we just create awareness and teach beachgoers about the birds and their life stories and the help that they need, the troubles they're having, and how everybody can help. Who sponsors the volunteer program? It's sponsored by the town of Kiowa. Why did you want to be a shorebird steward? I really love all animals, always have. For a long, long time, I just had a special thing for birds. I love birds. And when we retired to Kiowa, I saw that there was a brand new program starting for the shorebirds, and so I was just very interested in doing that. I was the shorebird steward for one year, and then the coordinator who founded and coordinated the program that year had to move out of state and asked if I would be interested in coordinating it the next year which was last year, and I was honored to do that. I'm still honored, I'm really proud of the program and the stewards that we have. There's been some interest in becoming part of the Shorebird Stewardship Program. How does one become involved with it? Very easily. Ideally, it's great to get in on our kickoff meetings that we hold in the spring, typically February or March, and that is a uh, meeting that anybody can attend and just find out about the program and decide if it's for them. There's on-the-job training for people who aren't able to come to the kickoff meeting. I can go out with folks until they feel comfortable. We provide training material that people can have and take on the beach with them. So it's pretty simple and easy. And I just encourage people to email me if they're interested. What does a shorebird steward do on a typical day? Well, it varies. Right now, the red knots are on the island. The red knots are there um, mostly from March through May. And what a shorebird steward does during that period is try to protect the red knots' ability to rest and feed while they're there on Kiowa. The knots will rest and roost at high tide because they can't go down and feed near the shore. Uh, they will mainly be on the ends of the island, like Captain Sam's Inlet and way out by the ocean course. But then when they're feeding, when the tides drop, then they're all along our beach. And so shorebird stewards jobs are to try to keep people away from the flocks of red knots, give them a lot of distance. So they're just out there on the beach walking and talking to people and maybe offering their binoculars so that people can actually get a great look at these awesome birds. And that's what they do during that period. But then other birds start nesting out on the east end. And then our stewards are mainly on the east end out near the ocean course nesting area. And we need to make sure that people know to stay away from the nesting birds um, to protect them. What types of shorebirds would you expect to see during uh, typical days? Right now, the star of the show is the Red Knots, and uh, they're going to be the star of the show probably from March through May. And then on the east end, the nesting birds that we have out on the east end are the oyster catchers, which are so cool to see. Uh, least terns, the little tiny little terns, are out on the east end. We have nesting Wilson's plovers out on the east end. 
and the willets, the very common that you see often wading along our shore, the willets nest here on Kiowa. I encourage people to just learn more about the birds. We have amazing birds on Kiowa. When are the typical months, uh, the nesting season? So they start nesting in April and probably goes through July, maybe August, but we're pretty much done with it on Kiowa in July. We got some pears out there now on the East End. Oyster catcher pears, Wilson's clovers. Nests are imminent, if not already there right now. So that's really exciting. With the nesting season and all these birds visiting, what shorebirds near help the most? That's an interesting question. Honestly, people need to know that all shorebirds need our help. All shorebirds that need the beach need our help. Their numbers are declining and we humans need to help them stabilize their population and prevent further decline. That's the most important thing I want to say. I did not know that until I got involved with the Shorebird Stewardship Program and most people don't realize that almost all shorebirds are declining and they need our help. The red knot have declined a bit faster than some of the other species of, of shorebirds but really all shorebirds need our help. You mentioned that education and outreach with the community has helped to prevent impacts to these bird populations. Is there any other methods that either the stewardship program or the town has been uh, implementing to help reduce impacts? Yes, well, there's definitely signage out on the east end around the critical nesting habitat for the birds to have a safe place to uh, nest and raise their young out there. The Conservancy has been a great support and help to me and the program by uh, offering a table at their Earth Day celebration every year that folks can learn more about the birds and the program. And they've also, the Conservancy um, invited me to teach a Conservancy Kids program twice last summer so that I could educate the kids about our shorebirds and the parents are sitting right there. So I was excited that I had a room full of grown-ups that got to learn about them too. So I hope that I'm invited to do that again. The Conservancy has invited an awesome speaker on shorebirds and we're looking forward to a second one being able to participate. Could you tell us a little bit about what types of disturbances would impact shorebirds? What we see is people riding bikes through them, walkers walking through them, letting kids chase them, all in good fun, but it's really at the bird's expense. The red knots, when they arrive on Kiowa, they have flown, most of them, from South America, the lowest tip of South America, and then they arrive on Kiowa. Um, they're about the size of a robin, and when they get here, they are depleted. They are hungry and starving and exhausted, and they have a little window of time to fatten up and get strong to finish their migration, which is going to be all the way to the high Arctic, above the Arctic Circle. And so we now know that two thirds of the red knots that we get on Kiowa, two thirds of the birds that you're gonna see in those flocks are going to fly in May nonstop to the Arctic, which is mind blowing. These birds fly from the lowest tip of South America all the way up to the Arctic it's over a 9,000 mile journey each way every year. And so when they're on Kiowa, they've chosen Kiowa as a, a very special place to come and gather, what they call it staging. And they stage here and all gather in large flock. And it's believed that we probably have the largest single flock of knots on the whole Atlantic. And so we're a very important needed place for these birds. So when they're here, people just need to give them a lot of space and let them rest. Don't cause them to fly and let them eat because they can't afford to waste a single calorie. They've got to fatten up. They need to almost double their body weight to be strong enough and fit enough and have enough energy to finish their migration. So that's the one thing, people just need to let them do their thing as birds and give them a lot of room.
you know, on the nesting end, the disturbance out there is people get too close to the nesting area or the, any chicks or let dogs too close. Then the birds, uh, the parents can be frightened off their nests and leave the chicks very vulnerable to aerial predators like crows or gulls or heron or vulnerable to the hot sun. If the parent is scared off the nest, the chicks or the eggs can overheat and die in minutes. It's just really important to respect that nesting area out there and give the birds out in the nesting area plenty of respect and room to do their thing out there too. One thing that I believe a lot of people don't realize is that even a dog on a leash, a bird sees a four-legged mammal animal as a predator and they don't know your dog's on a leash. They don't know that that dog's not going to get them or chase them. They just see what appears to be a predator to them and they will fly off their nest and fly off their chicks at a much greater distance when they see a dog, even on a leash, than they would uh, a two-legged person. The birds don't know that they're not a predator and they will react as if they are. You'll see a lot of people on the beach riding bikes and oftentimes you'll see them running through the flocks. What do you end up telling them about the birds, the impacts? I always try to stay positive and tell them about the awesomeness of the birds that just got disturbed. You know, I find that most people don't know the troubles the birds are in. And so if I just tell them about the bird and its life story a little bit, the, uh, they don't need to hear a lot. They just need to hear how far they've come, the condition they're in when they arrive, and how important it is for them to rest and feed in order to finish this grueling journey. Um, most people, when they hear that, they're amazed and very much um, in awe and respect the birds after that. So it's really a matter of just teaching people. Most of the time, when people know better, they do better. I hope people will someday all know that disturbing these little birds on the beach can mean the difference between life and death for some of these individuals. Could you tell us why the red knots are so special? They are beautiful. They're truly beautiful. When they first arrive, they're sort of nondescript, little gray, sandpipery looking birds. And then they start to get their breeding plumage and they'll get that rusty red coloration and they start to fatten up and uh, they're gorgeous. So that's a treat to see on Kiowa. But the amazing thing about red knots in general is that they are amazing migrants. They have one of the longest migration They've chosen Kiowa as a place to gather. They call it staging. And they stage here on our island. They all gather into a large group and rest and eat. For our listeners, they're interested in what nests look like and how they might be able to spot them. Can you tell us a little bit about what they look like? Sure. And I think that's one of the things that confuses some folks uh, when they see the posted area. They'll say, well, I don't see any nests. Um, and that's what the birds want. <laughs> they don't want you to see the nests. And one of the cool things about shorebirds is unlike songbirds that fashion these nests with little twigs and grasses and all, shorebirds just make a little scrape in the sand, just a little divot on the beach, on the hot sand, and that's where they lay their eggs. And the eggs are amazingly camouflaged. They're speckled and they sort of uh, match the sand and the little bits of broken shell and little twigs and things in that habitat. And so it is very difficult to even be able to see those little eggs in a little divot in the sand. And then when the chicks hatch, they have that same camouflaged color. Their feathers are speckled in the same way that sort of match that environment. When the chicks get scared, they just all of a sudden hunker down into any little dip in the sand that they can find. So if a human is in that area, 
wrongly <laughs> and walking along, it would be very easy to step on either eggs or chicks. Do you have any last words of advice for our listeners? Peel Island is such a special place for shorebirds. So many shorebirds need our island and we're so lucky. We're so lucky and privileged that we get to see these birds here on our beaches. So we just have to help them, you know, give them their space. Keep your distance away from resting birds of any kind. Keep your distance and let them rest. Keep your distance and let them eat. It's really as simple as that. And then on the east end where the nesters are, again, keep your distance and allow those birds to be able to nest and raise their young safely. Since the Shorebird Stewardship Program is on hold right now throughout this pandemic, we don't have people advocating for the birds that are there right now. And so we really need to rely on everyone to try to do their part to help protect these birds. Spread the word about the birds, or if you see something, someone about to disturb a flock, explain to them why it's important not to. And maybe if we can all do that during this time, it would be of great help, even though the stewards can't be out there. Betty, I want to thank you for joining us today, and thank you for all you're doing to protect Kiowa Island shorebirds. Thanks, Lee. It was great to have this opportunity. Join me again next week for a discussion on Kiwa's sea turtles. Kiwa Island Turtle Patrol Program Coordinator and Permit Holder, Lynn Sager. She'll talk about sea turtles, the Kiwa Island Turtle Patrol, and about what to expect this summer of 2020.